Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. And you know, I started trimming my watermelon plants and then I thought maybe I should show you what I'm doing. So here are my totes, they're 18 gallon totes. That one's got a full two system with the bucket. I've got videos on that with a green bucket. I throw food scraps, leaves in there and I lift the yellow bucket and put it in there. So that's full of earthworms, which is giving a constant food source for my watermelons, which is making my watermelons grow. Now in here, let's see if you can see in there, I just got some flower pots. Same concept, I can lift this, I water there, it waters in there and it feeds the plants. The second pink flower pot is where I can put food scraps or leaves in there. The top I can grow in, which I haven't grown anything in it yet, but I might put some walking onions in there, but I have some potting soil in there. So when I water it, Everything has holes. It is going down into the second one and leaching into the tote. And then it comes out. And right now it's feeding a celery down there. See? So when the water comes out of there, it runs into the red bucket with the celery. Now the reason I'm trimming my watermelon is to keep the watermelons going. I trimmed off a lot that actually the watermelon started to fizzle out. See this? Turned yellow, did not grow. All right, so what's going on is these are sugar babies and they put a lot of energy into growing these watermelon really fast. I had one grow in 30 days we were eating it from the time it started until we ate it. Generally, it can take 60 to 72 days. I think these are going to be getting really close in the next week or two, couple weeks, I should say. So what I'm going to do is trim everything back and I started here. Anything that I think is not doing well, see how they're turning brown? I don't need it because what these two plants, and that's two plants. Technically, I should have put one in here, but I've pushed two and that one's got three. All right, these two plants are trying to keep the water up to feed their fruit. So this one's got one, that one plant's got one here, and it's got one there. And then it's got another one starting here. I don't know if it'll make it because it's on the same line. So if this can get enough water to it and nutrients, it will make it. And I believe there was another one somewhere hidden on the other vine. You really can't push more than three on the sugar baby, even if it's in the ground, because you start to get smaller fruit and less fruit. Some people go as far as only having one fruit per plant. So I may do that here, I'm not sure. And what I'm doing in the meantime is already starting some seeds. So as soon as these plants are done, they're not gonna refruit. I'm not even gonna give them a chance. I'll start getting some more watermelon planted here or somewhere else. So I've trimmed off all the bottom, see? There's no reason to leave these. See how thin they are? They're kind of growing, here's one. You can see how thin it is, all right? As they start getting thinner, they're not pulling enough water and nutrients up to take care of the watermelon, so why leave it? Now, it just so happens, this one does have a watermelon that may make it, and there's another watermelon down there, and there's a watermelon there. So what I have to do is go back to each individual plant and see how many are growing, and decide, there's another one back there, and I have to see which plant that one's off. I have to decide how many watermelon I'm gonna leave. And then you want to start getting off these trailers because all they're doing is pulling. Now I may want to try to save that one so I can snip it here if I want and then not let it continue to grow a super long vine. Or I can leave it for now, keep it well watered. Now I water these here because we're so hot and dry. I'm watering them twice a day. So I water them a little bit in the morning, I can water the bucket and then I come back in the evening and water them just to make sure they have enough water. As they get close to ripening and I start to see that they're done, then you kind of pull back on the water and I still will water once a day. I don't want to lose the watermelon. Some people say they split. I have never had one split. Now what I will say is everybody says, and I've seen this for years, as soon as the tendril, this is the tendril, turns brown, pick your watermelon. Let me tell you something. It's up to you. I do not. I wait at least a week. It doesn't even hurt if you want to wait two weeks because it's not going to hurt anything, but I would definitely tool it so nothing else comes along and gets it. But one week should do the job. If you pick it 
and it isn't completely sugared up. It's kind of like curing it, kind of like a sweet potato. When it sits, once it's done, the sugars get intense. Now, if I picked it now while the tendril is still green, it will not sweeten up because it's not ready yet. But once it's ready, the sugar will intensify if you wait that extra week. And that's what I do. I wait one week. I've seen some people do videos. There was one with his kids and he cut it up and he sliced them and gave them to the kids and they spit it out. And so they couldn't eat it because he picked it as soon as the tendril turned brown. Had he waited one more week, the kids probably would have been begging for more. See, I can see all through there a whole bunch of watermelon coming through. So I would say no more than two for sugar baby. That would be really good. If you want to really be sure you get it, one nice fruit, you can pick the nicest fruit. So what I could do is leave this one and maybe trim this off. If it starts to go yellow and stops growing, I will then at that point take it off and trim it back and concentrate on this. And that is the best way to do it. And I'll show you exactly how I trim them and how much I take off. You don't want to take too much, but you don't want to damage the stem. But look how, really, when you look at it, look at this small stem that has to go all the way up and feed this. Because if this loses water, it won't taste that good. And you want a really nice, sweet watermelon. So it's not like zucchini where they're just going to keep growing and growing and you're going to pick. You actually want to understand when you're setting up totes or containers what it is you want for your family. Are you looking for real food like squash and tomatoes, something that's going to keep going? That is a different type of fruit or vegetable if you want to call it that. But when it's watermelon, that's a treat. That's a special treat. So you know and be aware that you're probably only going to get one good watermelon or maybe two off of one plant. I will always suggest to do more than one plant because a lot of times they just don't produce fruit. So I would do two or three and then here I've got three. Now three is really pushing it, but it's doing, let me show you something. This thing is doing really, really well. I like that it's sitting on the bottom. I don't have to, you know, tool it or give it a little sling. I'm going to give this one a sling pretty soon. It's really on tight. I've got this here to, to help support all my stakes. That's the irrigation tubing. And then I've got the irrigation tubing here that is supporting this here. And then I can tie something up to hold it. You would be surprised as long as nothing touches it. They can just hang there until they're ready. But I'm going to give it a little support fairly soon. So I'm going to go through all this and I'm going to try to keep there's three plants in there. So this one plant, okay, let's look in here. This one plant's got this one. And then I've got that one plant has got that one. Oh, see, each one's got a fruit. Let's walk around on the other side because that's probably what I'm going to do. Have five here. And if somebody throws an extra one, that would be good. But I think I'm going to go with one. And then the third plant has this one. And that will give me, in these two totes, five watermelon. And I know some of you are going, ah, that's one per, per plant. Well, you know, that's what sugar babies do. And like I said, you can push two and three. But I don't know if I'm going to do that. I have done that in the past. There's another watermelon. So we'll wait and see how this one goes. This one that's growing here is off of this one. So this one's got two here and then I'll have to kind of go through. But see how skinny they are? I'm going to leave this one for the bees right now to come to and pollinate still some of them. But that's when you want to kind of decide on how you want to do it. I'm really would be very happy if these two totes right now in 60 days gave me five watermelon. And what it does is it shows me I can get three plants into one tote. Two in that one, three in that one. And that's really good. And the way I start my seeds, I don't waste my seeds. I only grow the seeds, the plants that I want. If I want, let's say, five plants, I may put six seeds in the growing method of which I do. I'm not wasting my seeds. And like I said, in the meantime, I've got more starting right now. So let's get some trimmed and I'll show you how I do that. Now this plant that's got the big watermelon inside I showed you has got two more stems, two more runners, I should say, off of the same vine. 
This one's got a watermelon that seems to be doing pretty good. And this one does not. The flowers kind of burnt out. They could have been male flowers. They actually were male flowers. But knowing that this one's good, I'm going to take this runner off because it's not going to do any good. And I'm going to snip it pretty far down and take that off. Let me back you up so you can see what I did. Now see, I took this down to the base of the plant and took all this off because there's really no watermelon on here. And I want that second watermelon to make it, which is down there. I may actually in a couple days come back and take the rest of the vine that's down there. See that vine on the bottom? I know the sun is getting really bright. I might trim it maybe up to here or up to here later on. Might take it off right there. This way it will go through and feed that watermelon. I won't let it continue to run. On this, that's all you do is you decide where you want to cut it. And with the scissors, I use the scissors, I cut it and that's it. Be careful with the scissors, I actually cut myself very lightly. The other day I was going through and I didn't know my hand was there. So be careful with the scissors. I get plain old scissors this time of the year. You've got all the kids going back to school and I got this beautiful scissors for a dollar and it will get in there and do the job beautifully. So I hope I gave you some ideas on can you grow watermelon in totes? You bet you can. I've been doing it for years. You can grow it in a five gallon bucket as well. If you're gonna do a five gallon bucket, I would only do one watermelon. And make sure you put a two system or something in there to keep your watermelon well fed. Keep in mind, if you leave too many, you could end up with none because they might fizzle out before they're done. And as they get closer to being ripe, that's when you pull the water a little bit so they don't engorge themselves with tons of water and crack. I will continue to water these until I see the stems are starting to dry out. And then I will probably go back to a, a light one a day watering instead of right now doing twice a day. Hope I gave you some tips and ideas that you can use. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.